Welcome to Tea Talks, where stories of young adults and church experience come together to blend into a beautiful insight to inspire us. So grab your cup, sit down, relax, and enjoy while we spill the tea. And today I have my friend Bobby here with me. Bobby, thank you so much for accepting the invitation to be part of this video series. I am so excited that you are here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. And as we start, why don't you share a little bit about you, who you are, where you're from, family, and so on. So my name is Bobby Tincopa. I was born in the Bronx, New York. I moved to Connecticut, lived there for about 25 years. And then in 2021, I moved to Charlotte. Uh, where I am a teacher uh, at a uh, at a elementary and middle school, sorry. And um, I am I have two brothers. I have a lovely mom and dad, a uh, beautiful wife, and a beautiful daughter as well, and a little labradoodle, two years old. That is so, awesome. So yeah. you have the whole whole package. Yeah, everybody is. Uh, they all moved to Charlotte as well. So yeah. And uh, I have a feeling for, for the love that you're expressing about your lovely, beautiful wife mm -hmm. and all of that, that close-knit family is something very important to you. Mm -hmm. How is the concept, how significant is the concept of having a community to you? So having a community is very important. Um, it's, in specifics, having the unity of the community is, is essential because when you have God and you have love and you want to share that, you don't want to have that to yourself. So when you're unified with your community, you definitely want to spread that happiness and spread the love. And it's just important for everybody to be there together and have a strong relationship with each other. No clicks within the community, but just pure love and great energy, positive energy within the community. Um, and it's just something you you're so excited about that you want to share to everybody. You always want to expand your community because you want everybody to experience that kind of love and friendship and just the love of God himself. So community is important. Yes, yes. And you said something like about cliques. And sometimes we have such a negative feel about cliques. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was thinking, well, but we want to be close to people that we know, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point I'm like, okay, less negative about cliques, being clicky. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, Although I have the friends that I know, we need to always be paying attention to the people that are outside to make sure we are not leaving somebody without a click, exactly, you know, like without exactly. having that family, you mm -hmm. know, that community, which is so important. Absolutely right. How has your church experience nurtured genuine relationships and meaningful connection among young adults? So in, when I was living in Connecticut, I, the church that I went to was a Spanish church and they were very conservative. The church was awesome growing up. You know, my parents really helped me build my foundation and that the church also helped to build my foundation in Christ. Um, they taught me everything I know. Uh, I was seven years old when I first started preaching there. And, you know, they from Sabbath school to the kids story, to the praise team, to preaching, to everything. It was great. They taught me so much and it was it was awesome. It was a great environment, but they were also very traditional where they didn't believe um, with moving on they had the same traditions every every single week it was the same it was the same thing it was very repetitive it was almost like it was a routine and growing up all of the kids that were my age they all left church they never stayed inside of church which was really sad because i grew up with maybe two or three kids that were around my age uh, everybody who was my brother's age, uh, he's a couple years older than me, they also had left too. So it was rough seeing that, that all the kids leave. And, and But when I moved to Charlotte, it was a very different environment. It was different I, I want to touch a little bit more on the first part, and mm -hmm. then you're going to continue with yeah. the part when you moved. I think that is a struggle, not only for you. I see that a lot of immigrant kids, mm -hmm. like when they come to be the second generation, they are, they're going through the same thing. And mm -hmm. that's why I want to dwell on that part a little more, because mm -hmm. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be watching this video, they, they're going to be like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So there is this thing of, and, and I understand, I come from, the, I see the, the side of the parent, mm -hmm. and I also see the side of the kid. You know, like as a parent coming from another country, we want to keep our culture. We want to show our kids. And uh, sometimes it's hard for them to relate and understand that 
the child is really not from that country mm -hmm. anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk, before we move to Charlotte, mm -hmm. <laughs> why don't you talk like as an immigrant kid, how it was being part of this new world for your family and being part and wanting to also be part of the old world, like the, mm -hmm. the two worlds. So uh, my parents are both from Peru and they had their church there and it was really big. And um, they were also very conservative and traditional. But like you said, they were they did all the generations that they had after stayed there. So being in, the, in, in a church in the United States and coming it being a second generational, um, it just it was very different because you saw the new trends that are different. The cult, it's a huge culture shock. Uh, I visited Peru. I went to the churches where they grew up, and it's a huge culture shock. It's very different. Uh, people there are very happy with the way that they're doing things. And when I was seeing where my friends were leaving, it's because there was a lack of communication with the leaders and just falling short on listening to the needs of the youth and you know the, the young adults there, too. It was just a, a, a very, you know, it's a very important that we talk about this because we need a bridge between both generations because now my generation is older and we're seeing that a lot of the people who we grew up around with, were, they're not in church, but we see the younger generation struggling through the same thing and we don't want that to happen to them. So we want to step up and build a community and help them as much as we can within the church and without the church as well. So it's very important to bridge the gap between all generations. And, and I can imagine that the parents feel like if I let go of those traditions mm -hmm. that for them was their way to have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. they feel like they're sinning against God. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's also difficult for the young person growing up mm -hmm. because you're not in Peru. Yeah. It's very different. Mm -hmm. And so it has that, that struggle between the, the, the two cultures. Mm -hmm. But I think this is what we need to do. Start having conversations to see how we can bridge the gap, like you said it really well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, tell me. Then you came, you went to Charlotte. Yeah, so when I moved to Charlotte, it was very different. It was more of a contemporary service, but the music was different. And touching a little bit back on the subject before, music was a huge thing in the mm -hmm. church, too. You know, they stuck real close and real strict with the Imnadio. They never did anything else, but... You know, in my parents' generation, they only did the Imnadio. My grandfather was a pastor, but when different groups like Forgiven or Peregrinos y Extranjeros came out, it was a huge culture shock to them too. And they were like, man, you guys are trying to change the church. And now look, now we have different bands and musical groups. And um, I always loved the worship of every single service, regardless of whether it be traditional or not. I love the singing, I love worshiping, just being there, listening to everybody united sing, and just, it's, it's, a, it's an experience that's different. But I am one person, it's not the same for everybody, so I can't speak for everybody. Um, but when I moved to Charlotte, it was very nice. Uh, it, was, it was something that I was really looking for. It was a different situation, it was a different scenario. Uh, different environment. It was very welcoming. I, I enjoyed it so much that I had no doubts that it was, you know, God's hand in moving me to Charlotte and, you know, doing my work here, helping everybody. But immediately I knew that that when the church that I was going to it, it, when I moved to Charlotte, immediately I knew that that's something I wanted to be part of. I grew, I added myself to the community, same thing with my, my family, and we just mixed very well. And we grew from there and, you know, we, we started training for leadership roles and things like that. And it just expanded. And it was great because it was very welcoming. And I saw the bridge between the, the, uh, the, the bridge between the gap on, of the generations. So it was very nice. It was very nice being there. And it's just different. It's, very, it's what I was striving to do in my old church. But when I moved here, it was already done. So it was an amazing feeling. It's, it's so crazy how music can be so controversial. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. But at the same time, and, and I, I've been there. I've been to the side of where I thought only hymnals are right. And then God started opening my heart to feel like, hey, wait, it's not wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more important for the parents to have their children in the church than to just be arguing about music and sometimes push people away because of taste. Right. 
tell me how like social events, small groups gathering, um, especially intended to foster community with young adults, mm -hmm. how did that play the role in deepening your relationship with Jesus? So when I was younger back in Connecticut, where we had socials, we pretty much just rented out a gym, a local gym, mm -hmm. where we had a bunch of games, we played a bunch of sports. Uh, some of the Pathfinders were doing fundraisers where they sold food, but it was very nice because it was on a Saturday night where everybody could just be together and have a lot of fun all ages, from the very smallest and youngest kid to the oldest adult. Um, and it was very beautiful just seeing everybody who you relate to. You know, you have the same interests, everybody has the same motion and energy, and it's very nice. And it's, you see them outside of the sanctuary as well. Mind you, there's a difference between reverence and, you know, having fun, because you have to separate the places. But it was very nice just, you know, mixing with everybody when I was, uh, when I was younger. But when I moved to Charlotte, the socials became a bit different. You know, we're older now, so it's, it's a little bit different. But what the socials started looking like was going out to eat, birthday parties, um, baby showers, you know, adult events. And it was very nice going to each and every one of those because you grow the community as well. You get to know each other. You get to know everybody, which is very nice. And um, different, different small social clubs like the gym, uh, there's like a group of like six or seven of us who go to the gym. We started going to the gym in 2021 and it was very nice. We successfully grew. We actually invited one of our friends that we met at the gym and he came to our church and he ended up getting baptized. Wow. Mind you, that was, that started off, we started off as a small group and my older brother, which you guys will hear his video soon. Um, he was the one that started going to the gym. He's a gym rat. And we all, you know, we all followed him going to the gym and exercising. It's just great. But like I said, everybody there has the same goal, has the same morals and principles. And it's just very nice hanging out with people who share the same views and values. Yes. But that does not mean we exclude those who don't, right? Mm -hmm. Those who are curious, like our friend who came started working out with us. It had nothing to do with God or Jesus. We just were working out. And then he realized, you know, oh, hey man, um, you know, we're Christian. We go to church and, you know, we worship, we follow God. We, we have these specific um, rules that we follow, but you know, they're, they're a guideline to shape our lives, right? You know, we're very happy and, you know, we keep striving for it and try to do our best, you know, for God and for his honor and glory. So he saw that and he really, liked it and he started visiting our church to the point where he actually got baptized and it was amazing because we were able to save someone else from just going to the gym and then i, I um, love it playing like uh we we would meet up with different people um and we'd play football on sunday mornings uh just have a huge pickup game to hand touch and we'd also invite different people people who hadn't been to church lately um and just their family members and like i said it's a nice time we just play sports we have fun but those are the type of socials that we had at earth like later on in life as adults you know it's different events but it's very important to show and grow the community but show the love that jesus gives us jesus gives us love so when you show that to every social event that you go to or socials and they see that they definitely want to be a part of the movement that you're with, right? And it's not necessarily just a movement, just the community. They want yes. to be part of the community. What you said right there, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because uh, one of the things that if you are evangelist, if you are pastor, the number one things like in research and things like that, that we see, the number one way to reach people in this day and age is not building a tent and inviting people. It's <laughs> what they call friendship evangelism. Mm -hmm. And it's the easiest one, but if we're not intentional, mm -hmm. if we're not actually, okay, this is what I want to do, we ended up not doing it. Mm -hmm. And what you just described is perfect because you're like, you went to the gym to have fun with your friends, mm -hmm. with your community. It's not like you're going there with us, you know, like mm -hmm. with an agenda. I'm right, not really right. there to exercise. I'm just here to try to convert somebody. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. But once you, be, you develop a relationship with a person, you're spending time with a person, uh, they're gonna see there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. I love that, that it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. How do you see the church supporting, supporting and caring for young adults in the difficult transitioning times, you know, because young adults 
are going through crazy transitions mm -hmm. in this day and age, you know? Mm -hmm. How do you see the church supporting that? Well, every church is different. I have to be honest. Every church is different. And I know for the majority of the part, no, well, not majority, but no church is perfect. Not a single church, no matter where you move, no matter, no matter where you go throughout the world, no church is going to be perfect. Some of them fall short. Some of them fail. They're not perfect. But what I see today is when somebody who's a young adult is going through a hard time, right? And they make the effort to communicate. Because I know nowadays people are extroverts or introverts, but when people make the effort to try and reach out to communicate with the church, the church supports. The church has your back. And if it's not the whole church, it's a specific group who's in charge of that church, like, or who's in, who's in charge of that specific field. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact when I was going through a hard time, uh, and I was looking for, you know, a, a house to move into. I had a bunch of my friends who were in the church who were saying, hey, like, you know, we have resources that we can extend to. And not only, you know, finding homes, but I, I have friends who also have, you know, everybody fights their own demons. Mm -hmm. So friends who, who had their problems and they reach out or they don't even reach out. The church reaches out and say, hey, you know, it's been a little bit. We're like, you know, we miss you. Not in an embarrassing way, right? Not mm -hmm. like the... You haven't <laughs> Not, been to church in three weeks. Right, or when you go to church, they say, hey, there goes that guy who hasn't been here in like five months. It's good to see you again. No, you know, it, it's different now. It's different. But the church is, it's very important that the church does that though, right? So for those churches that fall short, you know, some advice would to be, would be, you know, form a small group, small group, a leadership group that, re that that's their job. That's their main purpose in church is to reach out to people that, you know, maybe they don't even look like they need help because most of the times in today, today's day and age, the people who don't, the people who look like they don't need help are the ones that do. You know, they, people are very good at hiding their emotions and hiding their problems nowadays. They don't want to be a burden. They don't want to reach out. They, you know, they, they have that reserve in them. But it's very important for a church to reach out and help and, and communicate and just try to help anybody in every situation. But as far as my situation goes and every problem that I've had or most of the problems that I've had when I reached out or when they seen me with problems, they've reached out and they've helped with what they could right now. They don't solve all of my problems, but they reach out, they have resources and, you know, it's up to me whether or not I want to have, you know, take the resource and go with it. And most of the times I do, and it's very helpful. It's awesome when you see that they care and they pray for you and they, and they consistently pray for you randomly. And I know uh, the pastor of my church, randomly, he texts me and he goes, hey, I'm going to pray for you today. And he specifically tells me what he's going to pray about for me today. And it feels good knowing that, you know, you are on their minds. And it's not just the pastor. It's a lot of people from different, you know, places in the church. So it, it feels amazing. I support mm -hmm. knowing that they are there for you. Mm -hmm. They're listening to you before they judge. They try to know you and see where you are. I love it. Mm -hmm. Bobby, this was wonderful. I loved having this time getting to know you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a blessing being here and thank you for everything. Awesome, awesome. And for you, thank you for joining Tea Talks. I hope you keep stirring up the conversations and embracing the beautiful and messiness of life. And until next time.